I was probably 13 or 14 when I started playing bass, and I loved the sound of the instrument. I, I really thought it was cool, but it also seemed like a, a much more achievable goal to be able to play bass in a band than play lead guitar. I actually started out playing guitar first um, when I was uh, even younger than I got my drum set. I was probably... Uh, I can't remember. I was probably like in sixth grade, maybe. I was mostly playing a tennis racket, actually. <laughs> Look at this custom strap. Yeah. <laughs> this is technically my first guitar. I actually had two of them, and I'd even put both of them on and use it as a double neck. Because <laughs> I saw Jimmy Page with the double neck. I was like, wow. It's more like a ukulele now, but... <laughs> My parents weren't going to buy me a guitar unless I was going to be really serious and all this, so I kind of gave up on it, you know. I didn't expect them, you know, to be buying me an electric guitar and an amp and all this. Whatever, understandable, but... Uh, so I kind of lost interest for a little while. When I got serious about playing an instrument, it was pretty much just bass, and so I just went for it. I didn't start playing seriously until 15, and then I got a Cork Flying V, like a K.K. Downing looking guitar. My brother's friend sold it to me for 30 bucks. My mom bought me a guitar, acoustic guitar for Christmas. And my mom, we went and bought my first drum kit. Remember, we went and bought it, took the Pinto, you know, got a, a $200 uh, used drum kit. When I got my first electric or whatever, I started practicing a lot more. It was a SG copy, because I was into Angus Young, you know, so I had to have a guitar like him. We ended up buying this old Kent drum set. They don't even make that model anymore, and it was tiger striped, you know, so it was just kind of like very just, oh gosh, very gaudy, I guess, when you look back. It wasn't metal enough, so I had to spray paint it all black. I wish I still had that kit, and I wish I never probably spray painted it and, and just had that as a relic, because we're talking, you know, an antique, pretty much, that I had there. This bass here is the first bass I had for a cannibal. It was on Butchered at Birth and Eaten Back to Life. My first real drum set I got for graduation, bought it with my graduation money, so that was 86. I got a Tama Swing Star, which is like the low-end Tama model, but nonetheless, it was like, you know, to me, wow, a real brand new, you know, brand name drum set. My mom actually got me this one. It was a gift for my birthday, I believe, my 19th birthday. This one was probably a little bit less than $400 brand new. I can't thank her enough, really, for her getting me my first real professional quality instrument. First Flying V. My dad bought this for me. It's a 1974 Gibson Flying V. This one I got back in the 80s. This is an 81, actually. I think this is 79. This one definitely is probably my best one. I love this bass. I still play it all the time for the slap stuff. It just really resonates well. It's a very good choice for a first instrument for me. When I got the new drum set, I guess it was 90, 93, I think I got, 94 at the latest, I got my next Tama kit. I ended up selling the first kit, you know, which I almost look back at like, man, it would have been kind of cool to keep, just even if it sat in cases and never to be touched again, just, you know, my very first real kit, you know. So unfortunately, I don't have that. I've had a lot of guitars. I've sold them and, you know, bought a lot, sold them. I've sold this one. I want to buy it back. Basically, I was trying to sell it, and everybody acted like I was trying to give them cancer or something. Nobody wanted it, you know? So I finally sold it to this guy. He wound up selling it to a friend of mine, you know, and then I bought it off him. So it just kind of, like, flew around. I do have my last kit that I've had since 93, the Tama Grand Star, which I just retired, actually. The last tour we just did was the first time in any U.S. tour that I used a different kit other than that uh, Tama Grand Star. D-Drum, right here. Elliot, the owner of Dean Guitars, D-Drum in Tampa, Florida, you know, wanted to uh, hook me up. And I was like, hey, you know, that's cool. I need a new drum set. And a company that actually wanted me to be uh, using their product and made me feel good. I was using 24-inch kick drums for the longest time with my Tama kit. Went back down to 22-inch kicks. Went to a smaller toms. So I started out using 10, 12, 14 back way back when I started. And then I actually went to 12, 13, 14 for the longest time. So now I'm back to 10, 12, 14 on my toms. Kind of makes the kit a little bit more... Uh, Compact, I guess, you know. They're great drums. They sound great. I'm happy with them. Good company. Rob's a Dean player and he's got some custom made jobs, so, you know, they're, they're treating us well. David Vincent, you know, he, he's been working for Dean for a while and uh, he called me up one day asking me what kind of guitars that I was using. And I told him that I was using Gibsons and then uh, he pretty much said, hey, why don't you come on in here and check out some of the stuff that we have? 
and I loved the Cadillac, which I'm playing now. Unfortunately, I was able to build my own customs. This is a glossy finish with some butchered at birth baby fetuses on the inlays. And on the 12th fret, it says kill. Sounds awesome. This one's a satin finish, like a dry look. Got some tape up here so I can see what I'm doing in the dark. Most of the lights are usually red and the binding's red, so sometimes I get lost. I like the look of the red ones better, but this is more visible under stage lights, so I might go back to the white binding. This is actually the prototype. This is the first one that was built. This has pearl inlays. It's actually still my favorite of the bunch so far. And also I have a flying V. I had to get a V because Pat uses flying Vs, so I had to get a V to counter his metalness. <laughs> this is a new one I got here. This is uh, one from a company called RAN from Poland, and they custom made this one for me. It's got the bullet inlays here, got kill on the 12th fret there. It's pretty cool, I think. I'm currently with BC Rich. Every one of these are custom made. Here's the first one I had BC Rich make. It's basically a Kerry King V with the widow headstock. Try to make it look evil, you know, get horns on it, you know. Now you see them all the time. This is the first actual flying V that they did that with. And I also had them do on the fretboard, instead of how like, how like it comes down here, this runs straight across. I had them do a, uh, a thing they call the widow fretboard, which they bring the fretboard down a little bit rather than just make a straight line across. Because I don't use a second pickup. And they all have EMG 81 pickups. Except for this one, this is the EMG 707 because it's a seven string. It's kind of a prototype. BC Rich seven string I had made. It's got like a beast headstock. This guitar is in B flat, and then this one's B flat song. So these are like my two main ones. And this one's tuned down to G sharp. One for the odd songs we do them. They're tuned down low. It's a baritone, which means it's got a longer scale for a lower tuning. This bass is the one I recorded Tomb of the Mutilated with. It's an Ibanez saber bass, really thin. It was a little bit of an awakening for me to play a, a bass that had such a thin neck compared to a Fender. I actually have not used this in a while, but it's still a great bass. Anytime I pick it up, I'm like, man, I should find something to do with it. We just don't use four-string in Cannibal anymore, so all these basses have kind of been retired. This bass is the one I used on the Bleeding. The Bleeding has one of my favorite bass tones out of all of the albums we've done. For some reason, the bass tone turned out really good, and I think a lot of it has to do with this instrument. It's also an Ibanez, an Ibanez sound gear. So all of these basses were used at a different point, and they all kind of remind me of that time in my life when I pick them up. I bought this in 92 from Thoroughbred Music in Tampa. It's an 89 Les Paul Standard. Used it on a couple albums. Retribution, a malevolent album. And I used it on the Vile album. I used two basses on Vile. This is one of them. This is the one for the C sharp songs. Already came stock with the MGs. So that was killer. It's got a badass bridge. A lot of people don't know about badass bridges. And they see a picture of this. I have a picture of this on my MySpace page. And they say, damn, man, your bass has badass on it. It's like, that's actually a company that make bridges called Badass Bridges. And the only thing I ever used this bass for was recording vial. This is an 89 Gibson Les Paul Silver Burst, Gray Burst, whatever you want to call it. It's a special showcase edition, which I bought at House of Guitars in Rochester. I just used it for some leads and maybe one song on Kill. There's a cool story behind this guitar because when it first came out, I was 19 and I still lived in Buffalo. And I wanted it so bad, but I didn't have the money at the time. You know, I was young. So finally we went back and we did an in-store there one day at the record store inside of the House of Guitars and it was still there. And I was like, give me that. <laughs> and it was sitting in the case just like that. I was like, wow. I think it was 96. So 89 was when I first seen it. So nobody bought it. It had dust all over on it. Pretty cool story. The Les Pauls, I don't want to use live anymore. Just I don't want to get them banged up or damaged. It's more like a keep at home guitar. This is my uh, my original BC Rich. First one, I played it on every album except for Gallery of Suicide. It still sounds really good and everything, but it's just a bit beat up. George did that for me, it right there, and then, and then it all went oh, downhill from there. Don't film me. It all went downhill from there. This one, this, 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 that. Oh, oh. Then it just all started falling to pieces. Ever since he kicked it over. My foot hit the core.